This is the Provoke Prawn here with the Corsair 3500X to talk to you particularly about Corsair's new fans. Corsair's changed the wiring logic of its standard fans and made it perhaps more confusing if you're looking for information on how to wire them up. And I want to talk to you about the differences between these and why this is important to know if you're thinking about buying this case or these fans. So traditionally Corsair's fans have included two cables, one for RGB and one for power. And you always had an RGB node or an LED core or something along those lines to connect the RGB cable to. And it was proprietary and it was kind of awkward. And I've done separate wiring guides on these fans. These are the AF120 RGB Elite fans, for example, and shown how it's much easier to have a Commander Core or a Commander Pro to plug those fans into because you control both power and RGB lighting with this controller. And it means plugging all those in and then controlling everything with IQ. But things are now different because if you're not buying IQ Link fans, you might be buying these RS120 RGB fans instead. These fans are a big departure from Corsair's traditional fans because although they look very similar, they wire up completely differently, making both the LED cores and the Commander Pro obsolete and it will no longer work with these fans. So I think it's important to know that if you're thinking about buying or want to know how to connect these up. Quick note, on the side of the fan, you'll find a couple of arrows, one pointing to tell you the direction of the airflow of the fans, and the other one to show you the direction the blades are going to spin into. This can be really useful when installing the fans to make sure you put them in the right direction in your case. But as you'll see, the fans have a bunch of cables coming out of them. These are actually more traditional cables when it comes to fan wiring because you've got a fan power cable and an RGB cable for a 5 volt RGB header. You'll also see that there is extra cables here which are essentially for daisy chaining fans together. Selecting one fan and connecting it to another and then to another. Now I quickly want to go over how these work, the logic of them, because in theory you can connect them now directly to the motherboard and you don't need to buy any extra controllers from course there as long as you have a three pin five volt RGB header like this add gen two underscore three on here and a chassis fan header and system fan header, you can just connect the fans directly to the motherboard and then control it with your motherboard software and with your BIOS. So these will plug straight into the motherboard relatively easily. So obviously I'm showing you the connection for a single fan. I'm gonna do a lot more in-depth wiring guide on these fans separately that I'll link to and hopefully that'll be useful. But I wanted to give a quick overview of it. Now, you might be thinking that you could use a Commander Core or Commander Pro, but unfortunately you can't. Now, you can. If you happen to have one of these knocking around, you could for fan power, because these do have the standard fan power connection on them, and Corsair's fans have always had that, so you could plug in a fan power connector into this, but the RGB connection won't work, and that's really important. So don't buy this if you're buying these new fans because it just won't plug in. You can't plug that 5 volt connection into there because it's a proprietary RGB connection from Corsair for its older fans. So instead, what you want to do is connect them together. So if you have three fans from a triple pack or with the Corsair 3500X case, you plug the fan power from one cable into another. So you're connecting the fans together and connecting up the power for them and basically going from one fan to the next. You do that for the fan power and for the RGB lighting, and then you can connect those up so that basically each fan is individually connected to the next one. This allows you to chain them together. Now, I would suggest don't connect more than three in a group like this, because your motherboard header will only be able to support a certain amount of power, especially for the fan power. For the RGB lighting, it might be a bit different. You might be able to connect more than that, so you could probably daisy chain some extra in but when it comes to the fan power, I wouldn't consider putting more than this. So you can then obviously link these fans together. This makes life a little bit easier because you've got two cables then that connect to the motherboard. And theoretically, you can neaten these cables up in the case more easily if you don't have to run two cables from every fan through to the motherboard. The other thing, obviously, though, is you're going to be limited on the number of 5 volt RGB headers on your motherboard. In this instance, I've only got two of them, two of the three pins. There is a four pin, but you can't use that. And so that could cause problems. If, for example, you've got two lots of three or more, which you definitely probably likely to have because you're probably going to have a radiator and exhaust fans and other things, then you're going to have issues. You might have issues with the number of chassis fan headers 
or system fan headers on the motherboard, but you're more likely to have bigger problems with a lack of RGB headers because you're probably only going to have one or two of these depending on your motherboard. I often see motherboards with just two. So then you've got two groups of fans connected up and now I've got no 5 volt RGB headers left. You could obviously daisy chain extra in or alternatively you could buy something like this, the Thermal Right ARGB and Fan Hub. This can power eight fans and do the RGB lighting for them as well. And it is essentially a universal controller that will work with any fans like this that have the same sort of logic to them. Now this theoretically makes your life a little bit easier. It requires SATA power from the power supply unit and then a correction to the motherboard. But you basically plug the fans directly into it rather than having to put them into the motherboard. This is useful because it could be used also to tidy the cables up because what you'll see with these fans, especially in this case, is that daisy chain cables make the fans a bit messy and so it's easier perhaps to run them to a controller like this and then that controller that just has one cable for fan power and one for RGB lighting. Now it does require power from your power supply unit as you can see here but this theoretically makes your life a bit easier if you're putting a lot of fans into the case. So this is one solution. And this is the nice thing about this change from Corsair is it means it's possible to do this. The other thing is you don't have to use Corsair IQ software anymore which will obviously please a lot of people. So with the Corsair 3500X, the three fans that are pre-installed only have two connections that need to go to the motherboard, the fan power and the RGB connector. Now if you want to throw in extra fans, as I'm doing here, for example this rear fan with an exhaust setup, it's the same fan logic as the ones that are pre-installed but it's obviously an additional purchase, you run that cable back through the rear and then what you can do is you can plug in the connector to the RGB extension. So on the fans that are pre-installed on the side of the case, for example, obviously it has that daisy chain capability with the three pin five volt header for the RGB connection. So you can just connect that rear fan to those three fans on the side and then the RGB is then daisy chained in as long as it's connected to the motherboard at the other end that'll be fine and then I plug the power from that rear fan into a chassis fan header on the motherboard and that's controlled separately from the motherboard then and that way you've got those set up. Now I wanted to make a quick note on what to do if you're planning on using these sorts of fans on a radiator like I am here with the Corsair H150i Elite Capelix. Now if you want to do this you can just put those fans on there and then obviously you've got the cables to deal with and to tidy up because there are a lot of cables there. But what I wanted to do is show you quickly the logic of how you could wire these up because you wouldn't want to connect them to other fans in the system. You want to make sure they're separated out. Obviously we still have a lot of cables here. Again, you can daisy chain them together in terms of the power. So all three fans are connected together and then you have a single connector on the end that you then need to connect up to make sure that they're powered and that they have the RGB lighting. So connect those fans one fan to the next until they're set up like that and then you can run it through and sort it out in the back of the case. I've tidied these up quite a bit but what you want to do is then plug the pump head into the AIO pump header. So this is a single cable from your radiator. Plug that into AIO pump and then the logic that I used is I plug the fan power from those three fans I put on the radiator into the CPU fan header which you'll generally find at the top of the motherboard and that will then power those fans so both the fans and the pump are being controlled by the motherboard. The RGB lighting is obviously connected to the daisy chain system and then set up that way. The fan power for these fans is then controlled by your BIOS or other software that you want to download like fan control and your motherboard software in Windows if you'd like. But if you go into the BIOS and set them to PWM mode on the fan headers that you've connected, you can then also apply different profiles to them or set up specific fan curves for them onto those specific fans. So you can set them to speed up or slow down, be quiet, go turbo mode, full speed, whatever you want, you can set them up in here. And this is worth doing. Make sure you put them in PWM mode and do this. And then you should find that they run nicely. I will note that from my experience, these fans are quite loud. And that isn't because of the connections, it is just because of the design of these particular fans. So it's worth bearing in mind, and it's obviously gonna vary depending on what you're doing. This is under heavy thermal load, so it is worth noting that, but I did find they are quite a bit louder, for example, 
then Core says IQ Link fans. Now IQ Link, I've done separate videos on, much easier, much more straightforward because you can daisy chain fans together from one fan to another. The controller, which you can see, the small little controller can handle 12 fans per port and it has two ports on it so you can plug 24 different devices into it. So it's really powerful. It's a lot more expensive, but it's also quieter and a lot more flexible with loads of different devices you can plug into it. This is what Corsair wants you to do. They want you to buy the fancier system so you've got less cables, more control, and a much nicer looking setup. And those are premium and those are worth considering. But these new fans perhaps make life easier if you want to just have something that's more affordable and easy to connect directly to the motherboard. If you want to find out more about them, as I said, I'm going to do a full in-depth detailed wiring guide on how to set them up and the logic behind it all. And hopefully you found this video useful. Check out the links in the description to other related content. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.